Good morning, everyone, and good evening to some. My name is Joe Grabowski. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll be your host today. Uh, thanks for joining us for another Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants Hangout. For those who don't know what we're all about, we're all about bringing science, adventure, conservation, exploration to classrooms across North America and beyond. I'm very excited uh, to be joined by our guest today. So we're joined by uh, Kane Haymeister. He's a 14-year-old Australian who trekked to Everest Base Camp at the age of 10. In July this year, he spent 15 nights in a remote part of the Amazon jungle in Peru uh, with indigenous tribesmen as his guides, learning jungle survival skills and exploring their way of life and trekking uh, through the rainforest looking for rare and endangered species. So Kane is passionate about shining a light on some of uh, the Earth's most remote and threatened uh, regions, especially biodiverse regions, in the hope that young people will care more about protecting them. So I was able to meet Kane a few months ago uh, in Washington at National Geographic headquarters, and I was really impressed with um, the journey he'd undertaken. So Kane, it's really exciting to be hosting you today, and I know we've got a great group of classrooms from Canada and the U.S. who are excited to hear a little bit about your story. Cool. Um, do you want me to do the slideshow now, or do you want me to talk about the Sure. Why don't, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, and then we can jump into the slideshow. Cool. Um, well, uh, I love um, the beach. I'm down on the coast right now. I love surfing, skating. Uh, I guess you could say a normal, typical Australian kid. Um, yeah, I love all the all that kind of stuff. All right, Kane, and what grade are you in right now? I know you're on summer uh, or a little break right now, school break. Yeah, I'm in year eight. Um, right now we're in school holidays, and because of the crossover time, it's about midnight right now. All right, well, we definitely appreciate you staying up to hang out with us, and we're pretty excited to see a little glimpse into your journey. Cool. Oh, do I do the presentation now? Yeah, absolutely. Bring it up. Um, cool. Does that come up? I think it's just loading, and there it goes. Yep, we got it. Cool. Um, so in July this year, I undertook a 15-day expedition to a remote part of the Amazon jungle with indigenous tribesmen as my guides. Our objectives in undertaking this expedition were to learn jungle survival skills, get to know our team in preparation for a much longer expedition in mid-2018 in totally unexplored Amazon jungle where there are believed to be uncon uncontacted tribes and species unknown to science. Make a TV show for National Geographic Kids Channel and to not die. The Amazon jungle is in South America. Our expedition took place in the Matzes Reserve on the border of Peru and Brazil. Getting to the start, we first took a military airplane um, from a small town, Iquitos, to, um, uh, to another small town. From that town, we um, took a 13-hour boat ride upstream to Buan, Peru, where we based our expedition. Along the way, we learned some survival skills. These included using a machete, altar, making fire, hunting, setting traps, learning how to make a fishing rod, preparing the food, and being able to find uh, and create carbohydrates because most of the meals out there were um, all protein because most of the meals were found from hunting. Uh, we learned how to make a backpack from all the natural elements, uh, fresh water, and navigate without a compass. Risks and challenges. Uh, some of the risks and, uh, from these expeditions were um, going out at night time. Uh, night time was dangerous because it was pitch black and you couldn't see where you were stepping. Um, it was also dangerous because all the reptiles and mostly dangerous animals came out at night time. As we can see um, in the uh, uh, image, which is kind of blurry, there's a coral snake. Me by my guide. Um, yeah, it wasn't very pretty. Uh, they can kill you in an hour and a half if they bite you. Um, the uh, caiman are risks. These are risks because they can grow big, uh, about two meters, whereas the Australian crocodiles can grow a little bit bigger. 
Uh, anaconda is uh, one of the top predators in the Amazon. Uh, we came across a nine meter anaconda uh, track. We didn't find this, but we did find a baby anaconda, which was still two meters, which is still a fairly large snake. We came across uh, a tarantula nest. Uh, this is the baby tarantula, and this is the uh, mother tarantula. Jaguars are probably the top predator in the Amazon. Uh, we came across at two occasions uh, jaguar footprints. And these footprints were um, really fresh, like the night before. We carried a gun as well, uh, not to shoot the jaguar, of course, but to shoot in the air to scare the jaguar away if one came close. Insects were risk because at one stage I got two bullet ants that fell down my shirt and bit me um, down my shirt. Um, these can, uh, the effect I had was a little bit being drowsy, um, unfortunately. Here, yeah, because when you go hunting, there's not an un unlimited amount of arrows. Um, so when you, um, when you, uh, you have to go retrieve your arrows when you go hunting, if you miss. Um, and just so you in this image, he went to retrieve an arrow, but he didn't see it coming out of the tree and it went straight through his leg. Because it was full of bacteria and diseases, so uh, we had to get water straight from the river, uh, but we'd boil it and then put chlorine in it. Uh, the availability of medical help was really bad out there, so we had a pretty good medical kit. So we were helping the tribes people with their needs. Crossings were pretty risky because um, if you fell, it's a pretty uh, long fall, and if you fall in, then you'd be wet for the rest of the day. The dry season, so in the dry season, that means the water levels are really low. Uh, so when we were getting to the start of our trek, um, the we had to get out of the boat and pull it across logs uh, a lot of times. Wet, so at night times, we needed to make sure our clothes were dry for the next day. Sleeping was a challenge because we had to sleep on the ground um, and there'd be heaps of bugs and insects all night. Hunting, uh, some of the type of food we ate were wild pig, small and big rodents, tapir, wild turkey, piranha, and bullfrog. My team. My, th my team consists of Hanan. Uh, Hanan is in the background. He is the chief of the Matses and Sir Hill. Uh, Dennis. Dennis was the brother of Hanan and who is really good with the bow and arrow. Uh, Armando. Armando is the father of Dennis and Hanan, and I taught him how to bottle flip. Hey, Jose was our, um, our translator um, on this expedition, and Dom, who was our cameraman. Didn't die, I learnt a lot. Why is it so important? Amazon rainforest provides more than 20% of the Earth's oxygen. It's disappearing fast due to illegal logging and mining. My hope is that through a National Geographic Kids TV show, we can help young people around the world realize how precious the Amazon rainforest is and learn to live more sustainably. Thanks. All right, Kate. All right, Kate. Thanks for sharing a little bit of the game. It's okay. Let me ask you a couple questions to get warmed up. Um, where did this come about? How did uh, this plan come to be? Um, well, our family has always had a love for uh, exploration and uh, finding new places. Um, this kind of came about because I love animals. And it's probably one of the best places to go to see all different types of animals. Um, so we kind of decided last year that um, since my sister's doing an expedition with the North Pole, South Pole and Greenland, uh, we thought I'd try and do an expedition. And this was kind of one of the ideas where me and Dad came up with to see the most flora and fauna. All right. And what kind of planning goes into something like this, I imagine? You know, you couldn't pull this together in a week or two. How long did this take to all come together? Uh, it took probably around a month, like, of uh, going back and forth between each um, place. Uh, I kind of, I've forgotten the um, company name that we went with, but um, Dad did a lot of research uh, how safe it was and uh, how reliable these guides are. 
because out there there's a lot of dodgy people um, that take you in and don't really aren't really supervised. All right. Well, let's meet a few of our classrooms because I know they'll have some questions for sure about your journey. And uh, yeah, let's jump first to Freehold, New Jersey. So we've got a grade four classroom uh, with Mrs. Bowler. Let me turn your microphone on and you guys can go ahead and ask a couple questions. All right, you're going away. All right. How did you cook the animals? Uh, um, the well at night, uh, we'd set up when we hunt after the animals. The tribe people would cut uh, small sticks, make a fire by um, the bark off tree wood, and then uh, using sparks. But we did use matches out there, and then you'd put them on top of a spit that they made, and then you'd put them on there and let them cook. All right, and go ahead with another question if you guys have one in New Jersey. Um, how did you build a shelter and filter your water? Um, the shelter was made by using bigger trees. Um, we generally set up with a, a tree that has a four, like it has a Y shaped on the end, so then you could go two big forks and then stick a log between. Put the... Uh, the paper sheath over top to block the rain from coming down at night time. Um, well, uh, the second question, how do you filter your water? Um, we filtered the water by boiling it uh, to get rid of all the bacteria and then put chlorine in it since there was so much bacteria and diseases. How did the water taste after all that? Uh, it's, it's not good. It's like drinking pool water, but it's better to be safe than sorry. That's right. That's an excellent point. And we'll give the class in New Jersey one more question right now because I know you guys have to duck out a little early today. Go ahead. How long is your next ex expedition and when is it? Um, an exp expedition is uh, next year, mid next year. Um, it's around about uh, 50 days, which is um, a long time. We'll be going into uh, the Sierra del Divisor, which is an unexplored part of the Amazon. We went there like on the outskirts of it um, and discovered hundreds of new species. So next year when we go in, we're hoping to discover um, new species along the way. All right. Great forest. Thank you for the awesome questions. Let's jump to Hutchinson, Kansas now with Mrs. Ediger and her grade uh, four class. Let me turn your microphone on. Microphone on. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ariana. Um, where do you travel already? Sorry, 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 sorry. Go, go, go closer. It's okay. Hi, my name is Ariana. Where did you travel already? As we're all, we're, as all, we're all. I think she's wondering where have you been besides the Amazon. Oh, okay. I'm um, sorry. Um, we've been uh, as a family. We did Everest Space Camp when we were 10. We did, uh, that, that's in Nepal. Uh, we also did Mount Kosciuszko when I was four, um, which is, I'm pretty sure, in Australia. Um, there's a lot of different places we've been. Uh, we did Machu Picchu just before I went into the Amazon as well. Um, I've been to a lot of places. Pretty lucky. Um, yeah. All right, we'll All grab right. another question. Another question. Hi, my name is Caitlin. Go a little bit closer. What has been your favorite place that you have traveled to? Um, it's um pro pro probably the um jungle. It's I I I reckon I could live there. It's um, it's just so unique. Um. It's just a beautiful place because it's there's no urbanization, there's no big city high rises, um, no smoke, no uh, gas. It's all just uh, made from the environment. So, Ken, I know so, you were there a short time for the first trip, but did it feel a little strange when you got back to the first big city? Uh, yeah. Well, on the way out from our expedition, we were just coming to an end. 
uh, when we were leaving the jungle, like exiting it, um, there were all these massive patches of cut down trees. Um, yeah, because the closer you get to the cities, the less trees there are. Like it, it just deteriorates, um, which is really shocking because that creates global warming and there's uh, enough space for people to live. So. All right, let's jump to another classroom. We have a group, actually sounds like two groups joining us in uh, Niagara Falls. Um, high school students, looks like grade 10 classrooms with Mr. Taylor. Let me turn your microphone on. Hello, how are you doing? My name is Alex Ruddy, and I was wondering if you could tell me, um, was altitude sickness a challenge on your first trip? And I'm aware that you're going to be doing a second trip as well. Mm -hmm. um, altitude oh. wasn't uh, really a um, uh, like a downfall there. There was not. There was no really any altitude. Uh, if so, there was actually more oxygen than normal because all the trees around. What about when you went to um, Machu Picchu at the beginning? Did you encounter anything um, there? Uh, Machu Picchu, not really. Um, I don't know why, but. Everest Base Camp, we didn't really experience any altitude training. Um, we, we do do a lot of training beforehand um, uh, in preparation for the altitude. We go to an altitude training room to get used to it. Um, so we're pretty prepared before we go on those expeditions. All right. And let's jump back to our group in Niagara Falls, see if there's another question. Um, I was just wondering how your parents and family felt about you doing this kind of more dangerous expedition than other kids. Yeah. Um, well, me and my dad actually did it. My dad came with us. He's been on all the expeditions our family has done. Um, mum kind of sits back and um, has to uh, uh, take it in. Um, but dad comes with us and he's pretty much really adventurous. Like we've always been doing adventurous stuff. Um, they're not really fussed with it. Um, my mum's more worried about public transport than she is about um, all these expeditions, so it's it's different. That's a really good point. There's uh, We don't think about everyday risk, but you know there is a lot of risk just when you go outside and, and make your way to work or to school, right? So that's a very, very good point. It is about risk management when you go to places. Uh, like that and it's really neat that you do have an adventurous family and i know your dad's a bit of an adventurer himself isn't he yeah he's um done the seven summits which is climbed all the seven highest peaks in each continent yeah pretty amazing all right yeah. um we're going to swing back because i know there's a couple more questions with mr taylor's group but let's meet our group our in Brampton yeah. with mrs Hastings back um they are a group of grade six to eight students. So go ahead with some questions. What was the hardest part? Um, uh, the hardest part would probably be the trekking. Um, the trekking was uh, every day. The first day we did um, 20 kilometers um, through uh, uncontacted. Uh, rainforest, so you'd have to use a machete and hack your way through the forest. But otherwise, if the uh, the hardest part would probably be trying to get to sleep, actually, because um, there'd always be noise everywhere, um, and you'd be wake. I'd be waking up, working up to howl the monkeys every morning, pretty much, um, which isn't very pleasant. All right, so I think that's a great point you brought up. Um, could you tell in the morning? between kind of uh, night and morning, could you tell there was a shift in the animals? Did the sounds totally change? Yeah, because um, some, most some animals um, go to sleep during the night. Some, most of them actually wake up during the night. There's a lot of nocturnal animals. Um, like there's more um, insects at nighttime than more um, larger animals during the day. All right, nice to come out the camera again. That, does it rain a lot in the forest? Um, um, it actually does. Um, but when we went, what I said, like I said in the presentation, it wasn't rainy season. So um, 
it only rained once when we were there and but the one time when it rained it was just torrential rain um we we're in the boat and it ripped off the rain cover on top of the boat water um but we we're pretty lucky with the weather that was the only time it rained all right, and let's go to our final classroom, Mrs. Shaughnessy's class. They're joining us from Thunder Bay, Ontario, and they're a grade six classroom. So your microphone is on. Hi, I'm Alicia, and my question is, um, how or did this experience change you? Um, good question. Um, the... I, it, it changed me in a lot of ways. Like now when I go to restaurants, I um, see how much food we waste. Um, every meal, like we went to a restaurant last week um, and after the meal there was so much food left over and it just goes straight into the bin and just gets built up on landfill. And um, out there in the rainforest, the tribes people, they eat everything like, to the bone. There's nothing left on the food um, on the on the animal or whatever they're eating, but like here in cities and uh, urban places, we waste so much food. Okay, that's an excellent point. Um, and I guess it takes a trip somewhere like that that can really help put things into perspective. Um, now I've heard that it can be tricky sometimes hunting the Amazon. Were they, the area you, you were, were they pretty successful in their hunting? uh yeah the the, the raised they just well that that's that's their um hobbies like we might play soccer or football and do that do that kind of stuff but like they practice hunting like i was playing with a little tribe people and they had slingshots and they were shooting them over the other side of the river um yeah since they're born they're like practicing uh survival skills and they don't really know it but um the one of the guides we were with was like um, the well-known Bess. Uh, um, he always came back with some sort of food for us every night. Amazing. Um, let's yeah. get one more question from our Thunder Bay class. Have you developed any friendships? Uh, yes, I definitely have. Um, we have kept in contact with the um, tribes person, uh, Sergio, um, who got the arrow through his leg. Um, since isolated to the outside world, they don't really have an economy, um, so they can't really pay for their medical bills um, when they get into the city to heal themselves. So we've been helping him um, Heal, him, heal his leg and become better because he's got like nine children back at his tribe that he needs to uh, hunt and get food for them. And if he doesn't, they're probably going to starve. All right. Well, let's swing back because I know we have some questions. Um... Go ahead, Amy. Um, hi, I'm Amy Lee. Um, what did you learn about the ways of life of the tribesmen? Um, um, well, the way they live is, um, more sustainable. Like everything I use, um, it comes from the rainforest. Um, all the things they build comes from the rainforest. They, uh, the places where they made like their huts, it was just trees and then palm leaves on top. Like that was their rain shelter. And, um, we learned, I learned from them, um, that they're so much more sustainable than us. Like we use so much unnecessary tools to um, keep us alive, unlike them. Now a question for you that I think will hit home with some of the students watching today. Um, you know, we, we have so much from video games to television and such, but um, what, did you, what did you see about the happiness level of the people? that you encountered on your journey? Um, yeah, when, when I was there, they are always smiling. Um, they're very happy people. Like every night, um, as a tribe tradition, I believe, they um, they play a game of volleyball on the top of the hill. Um, all the people, all the tribe come together and they play a game of volleyball. They have, um, but that's, that's just clothes and um, some Western sports. Um, 
I played soccer with some of the younger kids, um, so they know all the sports, but they're, like, upset. Um, none of them are whinging for um, more food. They just um, are so, um, what's the word? They're just not demanding. Um, they're just really happy people. Yeah, excellent. And I think that's a... Uh... That's a really good point is, is, you know, we get caught up so much in our technology sometimes that I think we forget that there's the outdoors and family and all kinds of other things that are just as exciting and just as much fun. Yeah, sure. All right. And Mr. Taylor's group, do you guys have another question? Um, hi, I'm Madeline. What did you miss most about Australia when you were on this adventure? Um, it it's probably my mum's food. That's that's what I'd say. Um, the food out there wasn't um, necessarily great. It was just the only Westernised food was rice. Um, um, so we'd have rice with fish. We generally ate fish because that was the easiest uh, source of protein, um, which was also risky because it had so many bones. Um, I would say it's, it's the food that you miss most, like the stuff that you crave when you get back home. All right, and from a few of the pictures, it looked like the fishing was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We went fishing one day to a like some sort of lake, um, and me and Dad caught like twenty fish to, all together. It was crazy. Like, but this little lake was so full of fish that you just go go pull it out, put it back in. You'd already have one on the um on the hook, and the Fishing rods uh, were actually made from the forest. They found a certain type of bamboo that hardens and it's really flexible, so they can use it as fishing. All right. Um, let's see. Mrs. Bowler's class, looks like you guys are still there. Do you guys have one more question for Kane? Yep, yeah. one oh. second, he's coming up. Oh. All right. Yeah, Joe. Come on over, Joe. Um, hi, um, my name's Joe. Uh, I'm uh, wondering what was uh, your favorite animal that you saw in the jungle? That's a good question. Um, I liked every animal, but um, believe it or not, there are actually dogs out there. They, the tribe people use them um, for um, hunting. They use them to sniff out animals. Um, to show them where they are, um, but probably, even though we didn't see it, it'd be the jaguar. The jaguar is probably one of my favourite animals now, after that expedition. Uh, we didn't see the footprints, but we didn't get to see the animal. All right, Joe, great question. And I know you guys have to duck out shortly, but we'll squeeze one more in if you have one. Yeah. Yeah. Say hi, Hi, my name is Aiden. Uh, how long did it take you to get to Peru? Um, all together from Australia, because it's practically other side um, of the world, um, almost. Uh, uh, I can't. It, it take around about twenty hours, around about that, and not including the stopovers, though. All right. Well, Mrs. Bowler's group. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I know you guys have to duck out now, but I'll give you guys a chance to say goodbye and thanks to Kane if you want. So I'll turn your microphone on. Say bye. Bye. All right, great force. Thanks for hanging out. Bye. Uh, let's swing back to Mrs. Edgar's class in Kansas. See if they have another question. Or another question. Or Go for it. My name is Kate, and what is your favorite sport? Um, my um, favorite sport. My favorite sport is soccer. Um, uh, I play. It's called MPL. Um, over here in Australia, which is National Premier League. Um, uh, I've played a lot of different sports. I played AFL, Australian Football, um, League. Um, and I also played basketball. Um, but. I'm playing soccer right now. That's probably my favorite sport right now. 
All right. Cindy, All right. One more question. One more question. Hi, my name is Emma. Why do you like exploring? Um, I think, um, I think exploring is a good um, um, being able. To, I think the reason why I do it personally is it's a good way to experience the world and uh, what's going on in the world right now. Um, it's a good way to see the impacts of um, humans and society. Um, this trip really gave me insight onto uh, the problems that deforestation uh, really has. Um, like I said, on the way out when we were leaving the thing, there were so many patches of cut up trees. Um, it wasn't funny. It was like there were so many trees that were cut up, um, making room for more people to live in. Um, but yeah, it's just. It's going to make it tougher as well for those people who are living in the jungle and trying to sustain themselves if they're losing more and more of their of their land and, and such yeah all right sure. um back to brampton do you guys have any more questions? mrs hastings back i think i see someone coming up hi kane we're wondering what your classmates at school and your teachers think of all your adventures. What do they think of all the places you go and the things you do? Um, they're quite supportive of that kind of stuff. Um, most of my friends um, think it's normal because I've seen my sister do it. She did um, those things. Um, I te personally don't know what they think about it because I'm not them. But... Um, yeah, I think that it's definitely different, um, but I wouldn't be able to tell you what they think of it because I'm not really them. Yeah, but it sounds like they're pretty supportive, especially at school. Yeah, do you ever have yeah. to miss time um, from class to do some of these trips? Yeah. yeah. Um, previously, we missed a week of school, but she missed like a whole month of school. So, yeah, and they're pretty supportive and they help us. Um, We've missed and help us catch up. So. Yeah. And so your sister too, she's a, an adventurer as well. Can you tell us just briefly a couple of the things she's been up to? Um, so she has been doing the uh, previously first expedition. She skied across the North Pole, um, which is cross country skiing. Uh, she just recently did Greenland. Uh, and at the end of this year, um, she'll be skiing across the South Pole. Um, and then she, if she completes that, she would have completed the polar hat trick and will be the youngest person to ski across um, all three continents. All right, pretty amazing. Um, and if you guys do want to check out as well, um, a little bit about Kane's sister, Jade, she has some uh, YouTube presentations that you can find, uh, some TED Talks she's done. So Kane, we're going to jump to a classroom in Thunder Bay and see if the grade sixes have another question or two for you. Um, what was the most exotic animal you have discovered? Um, it was probably uh, the tapir. The, the tapir is like, um, we actually ate one of them, um, which is probably bad. But those tribes people don't waste the food. Um, it, this, this, it's actually part of the rhinoceros family a long snout and it looks a bit like a pig um yeah it's pretty out there yeah i uh saw from your little video clip the were those giant river otters and they're like um they were probably my favorite animal before the jaguar I forgot about them um we saw heaps of them they're massive um they're like um well, they are like giant otters, um, but they have uh, the matters people. They have a certain call to them, and um, which makes them bob out of the water like little logs. Um, so you get a close look at them, which we got pretty good footage from. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, if you haven't classrooms, if you haven't checked out the the little trailer that I sent you the link to, uh, check it out, and you can see a little clip of those river uh, otters in action. We'll see one more uh, question. Do you guys have another one in Thunder Bay? We do. Uh, okay, Nathan, you want to talk? Oh, 
Um, how fun was your expedition? Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed the expedition. Um, I thought it was one of the greatest experiences I've had. I'm sure the next one will probably be even better, even though it's just trekking. Um, it, yeah, I'd say it was really fun. All right, and we're going to swing back to Niagara Falls one more time because I just got a message that they have another question or two. Go ahead, dude. Um, how was life adjusting back when uh, you came back from the Amazon? Like, did you have any struggles trying to get back into your regular everyday routine? Um, one of the struggles were probably uh, when you get back into waking up every morning at a certain time to go to school. The, the routine definitely changed. Um, I probably actually preferred the one in the Amazon, even though you had to go to bed reasonably early, get up early. Um, uh, yeah, I probably preferred the um, one in the Amazon rather than the one at home. Uh, it was also difficult because it was hard to get used to all the modern technology, um, getting able to use an iPad again and, like, all those games that, had left over and had to get back on them. All right, we'll see if there's one more question, Niagara Falls. Hey. Um, did you make any like discoveries or breakthroughs while you were in your expeditions? Um, not on this expedition. Um, we have uh, this expedition is more seeing if we if I liked it. Um, uh, being able to learn survival skills for next year. Uh, next year is probably when we're going to discover new species um, since we're going to un un uh, unexplored places in Amazon. Um, so, yeah, hopefully next year we uh, uh, make any. All right, Kane. Well, I have one more question for you. Why do you think it's important for um, students, uh, kids to get out and explore and find out more about the world outside their community? Um, I think it's important for kids to get out and explore um, the world because then they get a better understanding of what's going on. Uh, then they can give their kids a better understanding of what's going on. And um, it just helps with um, making the world better. Like, then uh, the whole world can change. Sorry, you're on mute. I can't. Oh, I'm back now. Yeah, cool. Uh, quick question uh, someone just typed in was about sustainability. Is there anything you'd recommend for students uh, to be thinking about or implementing to be more sustainable maybe in their practices? Uh, try and use less plastic. Um, even where we were in Juan Peru, there was still plastic um, somehow. Like, um, uh, I'd say um, think about uh, stuff before you buy it. Like um, if you start a business when you're older, try and make it more environmentally uh, healthy. Um, I don't really have much other stuff to uh, to help with sustainability, but it's just uh, stuff like when next time you go to a restaurant, maybe pick something uh, a little bit smaller to eat and then later on, uh, order something if you're still hungry, but um, less food as well, like stuff as we need to. Yeah, and I think that point you made about plastics is is a really good one. There's lots of alternatives to plastics. Even something as simple as stopping using straws could be a, a good way to start to reduce your footprint. And it is really amazing that, you know, from jungles like the Amazon to the middle of the ocean, you can find plastic and, and evidence of our throwaway society. Yeah. All right. Well, Kane, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Um, it was really awesome to hear your story and your adventures in the Amazon and the lessons you came back with. And obviously, we're excited to see uh, what happens next. And if all goes according to plan, is it about a year or so from now? Uh, yeah, around about just, just less than a year. All right, well, we'll definitely follow along and maybe we'll connect with you again before 
uh, the big trip for another hangout. But I want to thank our classrooms for joining in. Um, our classrooms in Brampton and New Jersey had to duck out because their period ended. But uh, what I'll do is I'll turn the microphones on in the other classrooms and give them a chance to say goodbye and thank you. And then we'll log out for today. So once again, Kane, thanks for staying up and uh, have fun with the rest of your school holidays. Yeah, well, thanks for letting me um, share the trip with you guys. All right, so microphones are coming on if you guys want to say goodbye and thank you. All right, everybody, thanks for hanging out. Thank you. And uh, have a great night for you, Kane, and a great school day for everybody else. Thanks, Thank everyone. You.